Now, on this video, we're going to be talking about sex linkage or genes we discovered by Thomas Hunt Morgan, which were in the sex chromosomes, and therefore the traits are related to the genders or to the sexes. And so, before we do that, let's just do a quick review on what causes you to be a certain gender. Now, this will vary across the animal kingdom, but for the most part, if you have a Y chromosome or the smallest version of the sex chromosomes, you're going to be a male. And if you don't have one, you're probably a female. So something like this, big X, big X, which has a paired X chromosomes, is going to be a female. And the males is basically because of the Y chromosome, or this small jumbled, much smaller than the X chromosome is. Now, the interesting thing about that is that since the Y chromosome is much smaller, it does not carry the same genes that the X chromosome does. So this male, the male that will have only the one X chromosome, actually has less DNA than females do. So while females have double the X, the X males have you know, one X and then a tiny little Y, which is mostly concerned of gener with generating maleness. It's exposure to the testosterone produced by the Y chromosome that turns embryos from the female standard to the male look. Now, so the male phenotypes are usually associated with the Y chromosome. Now, what happens if this, uh, with this gender here, which by the way is determined by the male, because if you look at the female, all she can do is donate the X, while the male can donate the X or the Y. If the male donates, donates the Y, you're going to have an XY, therefore a male. If the male donates the X, you're going to have a female. So males will therefore determine the gender of the offspring. Now, this, what's interesting about males is that because they lack the rest of the Y chromosome, they're lacking all the genes that would be here in the X chromosome that's not there. Let's review those genetic relationships or genetic genotypes that Mendel talked about. So let's say if you have a gene sitting on the X chromosome that's, lay, say, a big A. And on another chromosome, you also have a big A. So this will be someone whose homozygous is dominant for those genes. Then let's say somebody has a little b on this one and a little b on that one. So that will again be homozygous, except this time homozygous recessive. Or let's say a girl has something like a big C and then a little c. That will be a heterozygous, right? But when it comes to males, males will only have one copy of the X chromosome, the other is the Y, and it may not have those genes. You know, for, when it comes to males, they will be, for example, just big A, or just little b, or just big C. And so, then we have these things that we call a hemizygous gene, or a gene that's only one copy of the gene is available. And that will happen whenever you have a sex chromosome in males. It's, males are always going to be hemizygous for the X-related traits, because they only have one X chromosome. So hemizygous means genes which are not paired the way they normally would be in a diploid organism. So they're not either homozygous or heterozygous, they're hemizygous. You will also get that whenever you have a monosomy. You know, we talked about that in meiosis, whenever you have only one copy of the chromosome because of an accidental non-disjunction mutation during the meiosis process or during mitosis process. So that explains that. Now, in terms of the gender, females are what we call the homogametic sex. It's called homogametic sex because both gametes, this one and this one, are big X. So they can only make gametes of one type and therefore homozygous sex, right? Or homogametic sex. While the females can make an X gamete or a Y gamete and therefore they have two different types of gametes and therefore we call them the heterogametic sex, all right? And so that is the basics of genes across the genders. Now, what? Okay, so now let's look at the actual way that Thomas Hunt Morgan discovered the sex linkage that we're going to be talking about. Now, remember that he actually studied that whole linkage of genes and the breakage of the linkage through crossing over, and that's what he's famous for. But before he did that, he discovered the idea of linkage through sex linkage, or the idea that there were some traits that he identified in the fruit flies that seemed to be has something to do with with sex because one sex will be more likely to have the trait than the other. For example, you're going to see that by studying his fruit flies or drosophilia, he figured out that it was easier for females to have red eyes and easier for males to have white eyes. So the white eyes was, were a trait that's more commonly found in males than females. So 
He's not saying it's impossible to have females with eye eyes. He's just saying it's much rarer to see that happening than the other way around. So let's look at what he actually did and follow along some crosses to try to figure out what he actually did. So first of all, you need to understand the idea that sex linkage means that these traits are being carried by the sex chromosomes. So for example, the Y chromosome carries certain traits. It carries the trait for maleness, basically. So any maleness is related to the sex chromosome, like we talked about in the previous video. So an example of a trait that's, sex, that's Y-linked would be, for example, the male penis in humans. Only members of the species with the Y chromosome will present with that characteristic. And so that's a sex-linked trait. But what's most interesting is the X-linked traits, because males do have the X, you know? Females will have two, but males will have one. But the thing is that since males only have one, any trait that shows up in that X is automatically going to show up because the Y will say nothing about it. And so that's why in males, whatever trait is carried by the X chromosome is more likely to show up than it is on females. And we'll see how that it works in a second. But he discovered this by studying fruit flies. So what he did is that he crossed a red color female eye color uh, fruit fly with a male that had a white color fruit fly. Now this male, in order, he was hemizygous. Remember we talked about that or a few minutes ago when we talked about the idea that males only carry one copy of the gene in the X chromosome because they only have one X chromosome. And so he was hemizygous for colors of the eyes and he has white eyes because he carries the gene for white eyes. Now just before anything, you need to understand that the W plus means red eyes and or W without the plus is going to mean uh, white eyes okay so this will be dominant dominant and this will be recessive and then the red eyes are going to be uh, more common among females than males and white eyes are going to be more common among males and females so let's see how that actually looks like so when he did that cross he was basically doing a parental cross because he was getting a purebred red with a purebred white. Now, obviously, it's not really a homozygous recessive, it's a hemizygous recessive, but it works about the same way. Now, since the female can only donate one type of gamete, that's all the gametes that she has, she only has one LU for that, we don't need a full Punnett square, we can just make a, a one by two Punnett square. Now, the male can obviously donate either the X or the Y chromosome, and remember that the Y chromosome says nothing about eye color. So that means that this, this child over here, which is going to be the male because it's receiving the Y chromosome from the, parent, from the dad, which determines that he's going to be a male, he's always going to receive in terms of eye color is going to be the gene that he receives from mom, which is cell telling him to have right eye color. So all males of the F1 generation of this particular cross that he's doing would have red eyes. But the females would also have red eyes because uh, it's a combination of a red eye gene with a, uh, with, a, with a white eye gene, and then you get a, a red eye female. And since it's going to be a female because this is, again, the X chromosome that you're receiving from dad, and that would be the Y. So this is X and X makes a female, which is XX, red eye, because she has at least one dominant gene. Therefore, she displays the dominant trait. Now... When you get these children and you cross them with themselves, you realize that, they, they, that now it's a little different because the female can actually have two alleles and so can the male. However, both female and male have each one of the dominant alleles. So if they have to, otherwise they wouldn't both be red eyes, right? Now, the second alleule for the female is going to be, uh, she was a carrier of the white eye gene. So you're going to have a carrier or the white gene there on the second gamete. While the male is not carrying anything because all he has is the Y chromosome that has, says nothing about eye color. Which means all the sons of this F2 generation will have the Y gene. Now, one of the sons is going to receive the X, uh, the X gene from mom that actually, the X chromosome from mom that actually carries the red eye. And so he's going to have a red eye while the other son is going to receive the X chromosome from mom that doesn't carry their, their red eye, so he's going to have a white eye. Okay? Now look at the, the, the daughters. The daughters receive the X chromosome that's, that's a plus sign or has the red trait from the dad. So automatically they're going to have red eyes no matter what happens with the mom. But this one obviously also receives a, a, a red eye gene from mom, so she's a homozygous dominant for, uh, for eye color and therefore has red eyes. While this one will be, again, a carrier, which is carrying one red eye and one right eye gene, but she ha will have red eyes because red eyes are dominant over the other one. But you see that because males are hemizygous for the gene, there was no second gene to tell these males what to be. So whatever gene they received from mom was the gene that they turned out to be, which means that 
white eyes are going to be more common in males. In this particular example, look, let's count. You have one, two, three, four, four out of four females in the whole story which had red eyes. So look at how common the red eyes are among females. While among males, you have to have three, one, two males with red eyes, and one, two males with white eyes in the whole setup. So you see that the white eyes are more common in males in this particular cross example. Let's look at a few more examples so that we can see if this still holds when we do different kinds of crosses. Now in this particular cross, we are, it's basically the same cross that we did in the first step of the other one. So the, other one, the first one on the left is again the same cross between a, a purebred dominant and a hemizygous recessive. So we already did that one, so let's not worry about that for now. You're going to get 50-50 just like you saw before. Now, this is a different cross, so let's look at that. So you have a female that this time is homozygous recessive for eye color. Therefore, she has white eyes and can only donate gametes for white eyes. So you're going to get two gametes, two X chromosomes, which are going to have white eye chromosomes from the mother. Okay, which means all the children will be at least be carriers because the mother is forcing upon them a white eye uh, gene. Now, you're crossing that with a male that's hemizygous dominant. That means he has the X chromosome with the red eye gene. Therefore, he has the red eye color. So I make that cross, that particular cross. Let's see what happens. Now, of course, the male can only donate one X chromosome. So two uh, children will be females. So you see the XX happening here and the XX happening here. And those will be females. But because the females are receiving one, at least one gene that is carrying the, the trait, all of these females will have red eye color. So all daughters have red eyes. But since the males receive eye color information only from the mother because the white chromosome does not say anything about that, they're all going to be hemizygous for eye color and all hemizygous recessive because all that they get, remember the X chromosome of sons always comes from the mother. In this particular case, since the mother could only donate recessive genes, all the sons will look recessive and be hemizygous, white-eyed, sons again let's do the count you have one male that has red eyes and two males with white eyes so again white eyes more are more common in males than females let's look at this here you have one female with white eyes but you have two females with red eyes now in this last example of the same thing we've been talking about we're trying to cross a male that's again hemizygous white so hemizygous recessive for the trade so you're talking about a male that does not does not carry the red eye and we're crossing that with a female that is a heterozygous so this will be basically an f2 cross right or a cross between um i'm just doing a different kind of cross so you can see that this holds for every single scenario that you can think of so in this example all the females which are the ones where the x of the mom and the x of the dad combine look at them the females will one will have red eyes one will have white eye okay and then on the side of the male uh, because one receives the red eye from one, but one, the other one doesn't, one male will have red right eye, one, one male would not have red eyes, will have white eyes instead. And so you see that this is the one cross where the chances of red eyes and red, white eyes across males and females are the same. But for every other cross we looked at, it was always more likely for, for you to get a white eye on a male than it was on a female. So when you add up the total amount of chances, of all the crosses, F1, P cross, F2 crosses, the chances are that males will have more, are more likely to have white eyes than females are. And by doing this, he essentially discovered the idea of sex linkage. And this made him think about linkage in general, which led him to his further studies, which identify the way the chromosomes are structured, they explain the breakage of the law of independent assortment, and as well as the breakage of that linkage through crossing over. And that all makes sense. Now, on the next video about sex linkage, we're going to be talking about human traits, which are sex linked. So, and I'll see you guys then.